All right. We now come to matters of public importance. Formal business having concluded. Senator Fawcett has submitted a proposal under Standing Order 75 today. It is shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? I note at least four senators. I've noted at least four senators, not including the proposer. With the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with the informal rate arrangements made by the whips. I call Senator Fawcett. Thank you, uh, Deputy President. And, uh, I do rise to address this matter of public importance because the decision made by the Albanese government to cut the funding uh, for this program uh, is significant in three areas, which I will address. Firstly, the substantive impact on Australia's space industry. Secondly, the secondary impacts uh, for areas such as defence. And then thirdly, uh, the diplomatic impact of the decision made uh, without transparency uh, that has affected not only Australia, not only our defence capabilities, but also uh, our allies. To the substantive effect, the $1.2 billion National Space Mission for Earth Observation uh, was an important program. The reason it was supported by the former coalition government was that we saw the benefit of having a sovereign satellite capability uh, that would stretch over the next two decades. Defence, the CSIRO, the Bureau of Meteorology uh, saw the benefits in terms of security, particularly maritime security, weather observation, climate change, uh, water quality uh, assessment and environmental monitoring, and as well as looking at things like disaster preparation. Importantly, what it meant was that Australia would have the funding and the investment in our own industry to be able to design and build four satellites so that we would have that ability not only to design the satellite payload, the satellite bus, the launch vehicle and the launch system, but we would have the ability to tie all that together, launch and operate uh, these satellites. Now, that would not only serve those domestic purposes, but what it would mean is that we would not just be a free rider in the world of satellites and strategic data services, but we would be a contributor to our own uses, but also to those of allies, including the United States. And so by cutting this program, this is built upon a pattern of behaviour by the Albanese government. And in March, I spoke about the fact that in their um, National Reconstruction Bill, uh, the fund, space was one of the areas they overlooked. In contrast to the coalition, who in our national manufacturing priorities made space one of the primary areas and we invested in a whole range of areas, such as International Space Investment, the Space Infrastructure Fund, the Moon to Mars mission, as well as Australia's first national space mission. And industry, for example, the CEO of the space industry, James Brown, has said that the national space mission for Earth observation was the most strategic and significant space public policy in 40 years. Uh, ASPE, Malcolm Davis, has highlighted that this decision is political, it's a short-term money grab and it ignores the long-term benefits to both the economy uh, and to defence and to our national interest. The remarks attributed to the minister's office say there's nothing to see here and to quote they say, but there were no commercial contracts entered into, end quote. But importantly, and this is emblematic of what it means for the space industry, the CEO of the space industry has highlighted that as a result of this cancellation, investments that were planned for Australia's space sector are already being cancelled. So there will be no more commercial arrangements entered into if this is the way the Albanese government proceeds. To defence, we see in the media just recently that uh, a number of nations are creating capabilities to disable satellites, which means in a conflict 
where we may need our own industry to be able to launch satellites with both ISR or communications packages, uh, we will no longer have the pathway to enable them to do that in a timely manner because this program has been cut. And lastly, in the diplomatic side, uh, by not being transparent with the US, but importantly, by cutting this program, we've actually severed a relationship with one of our strategic partners. And I notice in the speaking points were the key messages that were only uncovered through freedom of information that key message 23 sub para C from the Albanese government said, we appreciate this likely poses challenges for Congress on appropriations and complicates your planning. Well, the Congress at this exact moment is debating whether or not they pass legislation to support Australia with things like the AUKUS agreement. Given how important AUKUS is, MIMO to Prime Minister Albanese, you and your decisions are not helping. Thank you, Senator Fawcett. Senator Ayres. Well, it, uh, we see um, week two of the sitting fortnight uh, hasn't been much better for week one for uh, the coalition and their, uh, and their process of thinking about what it is that they bring forward as, as matters of public import importance. You can only hope I mean, it will be incremental, I assume, but that there will be improvement over time. Um, this, this government, well, we'll see. We'll see whether it gets worse or it gets better, won't we? It, 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 couldn't, it couldn't get worse in terms of the performance of those opposite, in terms of what they focus on as matters of public importance. The chair, please, it couldn't, it couldn't get worse. There, there were a number of difficult decisions. Uh, that the incoming Albanese government had to take to deal with the legacy of record debt and deficit uh, left by the Morrison, Turnbull, Abbott governments. Trillion dollars in debt, nothing to show for it. Uh, very much of that, very much of that, accumulated in a series of reckless spending decisions prior to the COVID-19 pandemic a trillion dollars of debt over a decade. And, and we as a government have been upfront and transparent both about the global economic outlook and the headwinds Australia confronts and, indeed, the decision not to proceed with certain programs, including the National Space Mission for Earth Observation Program. The industry minister has been absolutely transparent about all of this. All of it. Uh, the Albanese government ensured that the United States knew the program wouldn't proceed ahead of the announcement. In fact, that's what the documents released to the coalition demonstrate. The steps that were undertaken in an adult way, in a procedurally correct way, to make sure that uh, not only were the appropriate government officials notified at the appropriate time, but that partners in Australia who were engaged in these programs were notified. And it was done in a programmatically specific kind of way. Uh, it was done in a way that, uh, that was entirely appropriate. Uh, and the, the, the carry-on uh, from uh, the Liberal Party about this is utterly extraordinary. The coalition characterised this as keeping Australian taxpayers and United States in the dark. Senator Fawcett just said it, that it severed the relationship. I mean, what an extraordinarily preposterous thing to say uh, at a moment when the relationship between Australia and the United States is remarkably complex and deep, the idea, a relationship founded, in fact, uh, by the Labor Party in government, the, the idea that you would say such a silly thing in the hope of getting a few column inches uh, in one of our national newspapers just shows how cavalier your approach and your friends, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President, over here in the Liberal Party, how cavalier their approach is to the national interest. This sort of smug sense of entitlement that you can say anything you want to try and damage the national interest 
say anything you want at all uh, is utterly consistent with your approach to transparency uh, over the time. You say the wildest possible things. And there's a history here on transparency. The former energy minister, or one of the former energy ministers, Angus Taylor, hit energy price rises, electricity price rises, from Australian voters on the eve of the May election in an utterly disgraceful way. Mr Morrison's office selectively leaked his private text messages to the French president, no less, ahead of the dumping of a defence contract in, in completely the most par nakedly partisan, uh, disgraceful effort, never been properly accounted for. And who could forget Mr Morrison's secret ministries? We won't be lectured. Uh, about accountability and, transparently, uh, and transparency. We certainly won't be lectured about or, the national um, interest by that lot. Senator Ayres, thank you. Senator Shoebridge. Uh, thanks, Acting Deputy President. Investing in science is important, and the Greens think it's important for more than just a wedge between the opposition and, and the government, but it's important as a significant policy outcome. So while I'm supporting this motion today, I note significant concerns with the attempt to play gotcha politics on science investment and funding. Cutting space programs for budget repair, which is the Albanese government's approach, doesn't make sense in the context of a financial black hole, which is also supported by the Albanese government, that's the three to four hundred billion dollars and growing stage three tax cuts. Or the $368 billion and growing budget black hole for some nuclear submarines that are never likely to turn up. So why don't we engage in budget repair by cutting the nuclear submarine program or by cutting the $45 billion hunter frigates program and not cutting it just by reducing the number of frigates but actually reducing the money that we're sending to that UK uh, that UK arms manufacturer? Or why don't we cut the subsidies for planet-killing fossil fuels instead of attacking science and space industry? You can bet, though, that if Defence thought there was an advantage to this program, that it quietly would have had the funding doubled rather than cut in the way that's happened under the Albanese government. But we know that to be a serious player in space requires long-term investment, to build local capacity and with it the skilled jobs, the industries and the infrastructure to succeed. And instead of doing that, cutting the Australian Space Sports Program shows a government literally willing, on the one hand, to fund war and climate disaster, but to withdraw critical investment in space and science. And when we do space programs properly, we get information and answers that relate to some of the biggest problems we have on the planet. But then you need to listen to those answers and act on that information. Much of the information we should be responding to that we've received uh, through Australian and other space programs is about the imminent and catastrophic impacts of climate change. And it's no good the opposition arguing to fund science if they won't listen to the answers that that science tells us, which is keep coal and gas in the ground. We already use much of the data from Earth-observing satellites to comprehensively understand what's going on with our planet and what's going wrong with our planet. The water, the land and atmosphere generally, as well as the challenges by extreme weather and other disasters. So yes to holding on to these kinds of critical investments. Yes to this science which is supported by the National Academy of Sciences. But let's not just do the science, let's then listen to it. Thank you, Senator Shoebridge. Senator Reynolds. Thank you very much, Acting Deputy President. I too rise to speak on Senator Fawcett's motion and I endorse everything that he said. Hiding the truth is just as bad as telling the truth to your friends and allies, and it is the surest way to lose their trust uh, in our uh, relationship, and particularly relationships that are now as important as AUKUS. So uh, while endorse uh, in addition to endorsing Senator Fawcett's comments, I also wanted to uh, pick up Senator Ayres's point, who admitted that this was a cost-cutting measure, but it's somewhat incongruous because in question time we've had the Finance Minister saying 
What a fabulous surplus they're going to have. So the two statements just do not add up. But as a previous defence minister, I want to also add the impacts that this decision will have on not only our defence-to-defence -defense relationship and AUKUS, but also it will result in a degradation of defence space capability. And in 2020, as the minister at the time in the defence strategic update, I introduced uh, a standalone space capability domain as a standalone defence operational domain. Now, this is now critical, fundamental to defence operations and particularly to ADF's joint force, which relies on access to space systems and also to space situational awareness. And the simple fact is that our potential adversaries are significantly increasing their offensive space capabilities in a range of areas. And no single nation, not even the United States, can tackle these threats on their own. So interoperability and every single nation, in terms with our friends and allies, we all have to uh, carry, you know, do our own share of the heavy lifting. And while this is a civilian space capability, for those who have worked in this sector for some time know that with our allies, the most successful defence and civilian space capability programs are those that operate together. And this program that uh, the Labor Party have surreptitiously cut for budgeting purposes, Senator Ayres has now admitted, will have a significant implication on defence as well. And one of the things that the war in Ukraine has proven is how irregular warfare tactics work in the modern era. And part of that involves Russian operating in the grey zone in space uh, when it comes to their tactics to block an impact on satellite systems of uh, not just the Ukraine but also their allies. So we are now well and truly in an era of irregular warfare in space and we and our allies must adapt to this. As I've said, that requires not only defence capabilities, it, in it requires increasingly defence to work with uh, civilian space capabilities. And to develop the right countermeasures, the threats must be identified and we must have redundancies uh, in our defence systems if they are taken out. So amongst the kind of grey zone space threats we now confront are cyber attacks against space services, attacking commercial space capabilities during conflict and also the conduct of proximity operations uh, to potentially coerce either those you're in direct conflict with, like in Europe, Ukraine, or some of our potential adversaries who could do that to us, to intimidate us, something short of war. Uh, the cyber attacks against the United States satellite firm Viasat ahead of the Russian invasion of Ukraine is an example of that. So cyberspace is a soft underbelly, underbelly of our global space networks. And far from cutting the services uh, that we had gone into joint arrangements with the United States, we should continue to increase, of them, increase them. So coming back to defence, as the minister, I ensured that the Morrison government significantly increased investment in defence uh, space capabilities, including a plan for a network of satellites to provide an independent and sovereign communications network. But as I said, for defence, the civilian uh, satellite networks are also incredibly important. Uh, I also implemented an enhanced space control program and investment in space situational awareness, including sensors and tracking systems. And I also ensure that defence work more closely with space industry here in Australia and overseas, and also other relevant government agencies, um, to make, including and most importantly the Australian Space Agency. And again, uh, we stumped up for defence additional $7 billion for these space capabilities. So not only have Labor acts as space as a priority uh, in the National Reconstruction Fund under the Modern Manufacturing Order. Initiative, Senator Reynolds, which are initiatives of ours, they are now— Senator Roberts. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. As a servant to the many different people who make up our one Queensland community, I thank Senator Fawcett for his motion, which One Nation supports. The Albanese government's decision to terminate the National Space Mission for Earth Observation, NISMO, will cost jobs in North Queensland. Abbott Point is a perfect— location for a space facility. It's close to the equator and offers consistent, beautiful Queensland weather providing for a reliable launch. A North Queensland space industry and launch facility would be able to capitalise on the Abbott Point Steel Park 
already gazetted and just waiting for the iron boomerang steel mills. An Australian Academy of Science report from 2022 called for, quote, investment in a homegrown Earth observation satellite program which would design, build, launch and operate the satellites and the sensors on board used to collect a wide range of data types. The program providing Australia with its own remote sensing capabilities with all the jobs and expertise this would involve was designed to reduce sovereign risk. Remote sensing is the mapping of Australia from space providing firstly an emergency capability to track bushfires, floods and the usual extreme weather events and secondly routine commercial mapping that would have grown Australia's productive capacity. Did the Albanese government not know what remote sensing was or the importance of having this capacity under public control rather than relying on a patchwork of private and foreign government suppliers? It's not like we can save the money. We still need this capability somehow. The cancellation of the NISMO follows the axing last month of the Australian Spaceports Program, which would have seen government funding assist in the establishment of launch facilities on Australian soil. The effect of this decision, taken together, is, is to decimate the Australian space industry at a time the industry was moving into a commercial phase. This decision is damaging regional Australia, damaging our national productive capacity, damaging our national security and reducing opportunities for career choices for our children. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Senator Bragg. Thank you very much. And of course, this is an important matter of public importance because uh, it is an opportunity for us to showcase that the government only gets out of bed if it is for a vested interest uh, each day. And typically these vested interests are the fellow travellers that are engaged in the Labor Party's pre-selections and fundraising for public office. Chiefly, these are known as the trade union movement and the industry super fund movement. And if it's any other part of the private economy, particularly a small business or a disruptive business, uh, you're on your own pretty much with this government because they really only respond to the, the policy agenda that has been drafted for them by their favourite fellow travellers. And this is no exception. And at the last couple of Senate estimates, I've had the opportunity to inquire about why the government has commissioned extensive reviews and then why the government has decided to make cuts on the nation's space program. Now, Minister Husick has made a judgment call that space is not important to this government and has decided to cut various programs. Uh, of course, in the freedom of information documents that have been canvassed by the opposition, it is clear that this is not an action that the government is proud of. The government doesn't want the public to know, particularly I suspect people who live in the great state of South Australia, that the judgment has been taken mm -hmm. to axe many of the large programs and therefore the resulting private investment that would have been accompanying public investment in the space program is not going to materialise. The consequence being that there will be fewer jobs and fewer opportunities in Australia, but particularly, I hazard a guess, in the great state of South Australia. So that is, that is the consequence of these actions. And South Australia has always needed all the help it can get because it is a, a great state, but it is a state it hasn't always had the largest private sector and therefore it is in desperate need of more of this type of investment. Now, the freedom of information documents show that the government is too embarrassed to tell our partners in the United States that these judgments have been made and there were deliberate attempts to try and conceal the information uh, which has been revealed by freedom of information. Now, I've canvassed the space industry and there is great uncertainty now as to whether there can be extensive private investment in the Australian space sector because of the ongoing uncertainty of the endless reviews. I mean, the government are not only hit the ground reviewing, uh, they basically cancelled uh, all the initiatives that had already been established by the former government. And so that has meant that the country doesn't have the sort of certainty that we need for promotion of private investment, but also we're now letting down our allies. And 
As Senator Fawcett and others have noted, this is a very unfortunate time for us to be letting our allies down, uh, particularly when we are negotiating and engaging in uh, a transfer of technology which is needed to power submarines and could be used for other purposes in the future. So this is a very difficult moment in our region's history. Perhaps uh, it is the most dangerous since the Second World War. And we have been able to negotiate with friendly governments, with our allies, the transfer of very sensitive but very important technologies. And so we don't want to be a fair weather friend. We don't want to be a jurisdiction which is unreliable. And we want to be a jurisdiction which sticks to commitments that we make. And everyone knows that there is great strategic advantage for the country and for our allies in properly understanding the opportunity of space, which is why we've been committed on this great endeavour for some time. And so that's why it is so regrettable that the endless reviews have been part of the government's approach, but also that there's been these indiscriminate cuts. And as I said before, the Freedom of Information documents make it very clear that the national government is embarrassed about that. Thank you, Senator Bragg. Senator Brockman. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Well, I too rise to speak on this uh, matter of public importance, and I congratulate Senator Fawcett uh, for bringing this matter to the attention of the Senate and uh, to the attention of the Australian people, because this is a very important matter. Now, why is Earth observation important? Others, others have talked about the environmental benefits of Earth, ob Earth observation. But for my home state of Western Australia and the home state of my colleague in the chambers, my colleagues in the chambers, Senator Smith and Senator O'Sullivan, earth observation is key to the economic development of Western Australia. It's key to the mining industry of understanding what resources are where. It's key to the agriculture industry in terms of predicting weather patterns, weather events, uh, bushfire risk and the like. Uh, so it is key absolutely key to the economic future of our home state of Western Australia. And, and that is why uh, the National Space Mission for Earth Observation Program, which was announced in the March 22 budget uh, and allocated funding, was, was so important. And it was something that was embraced by our key ally, the United States. And I think what is most disturbing and uh, what I think really needs highlighting is the fact that the government, this government, the Labor government, has treated that alliance with such disrespect. Uh, and I want to quote from the FOI emails directly. So this is from an advisor in Minister Husick's office, issuing a direction from apparently the Prime Minister's office and Minister Husick to this effect, and I quote, DC Post, so uh, Washington DC Post, to notify US system under strict embargo. Only those who need to know. Note, note that it was an express preference from the minister and PMO that US be notified no earlier than Wednesday AU time. So that's a quote. Now think about that for a moment. An express preference from the minister and PMO that the US be notified no earlier than Wednesday AU time. Later in that same email, it goes on to say this. MO Husick to brief, MO, ministerial office, so Husick's ministerial office, to brief caucus colleagues and select media. When? On Wednesday. On Wednesday. So the minister and the prime minister's office are directing posts to keep the US in the dark, so apparently the minister can brief caucus colleagues and select media outlets. Does that sound like a way to handle your key geopolitical, geostrategic relationship? That you are keeping the US in the dark so the minister has time to brief 
his caucus colleagues and media outlets. Is that really the way any government would be expected to handle such a sensitive and important matter as space industry development? And a commitment made by the Australian government. That should never be forgotten. We should not walk away from our commitments in such a cavalier fashion. And the post, the post in Washington was clearly disturbed, clearly disturbed by the government's action when they sent back an email uh, a bit later on and they used these words. And remember, these are diplomatic, these are diplomats. So diplomats always choose their words very carefully, in my experience. And how did the diplomats respond? They said, quote, our strong feeling is that we need to brief, brief the NSPC this evening. Now, for those listening, what is the NSPC? It's the National Space Council, a policy body of the White House. A policy body of the White House. So the diplomatic mission is coming back after being told to keep this quiet, keep this quiet to give the minister time to brief caucus and select media outlets. And meanwhile, our diplomatic mission in Washington is saying, no, 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 we should be telling the National Space Council this evening. This is an inappropriate use of power. Thank you, Senator Brockman. The time for the discussion has expired.